Hi, I'm Stefano from the RBA. In this video, which is part of our series of videos on inflation, I will talk about some of the more common measures of inflation used in Australia. Links to the other videos in the series are provided in the description. In the first video introducing the topic of inflation, we have discussed a specific measure called the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. CPI inflation measures the percentage change in the price of a basket of goods and services purchased by the average household. Another term often used in publications or on the news to describe this measure is headline inflation. The Reserve Bank's flexible inflation target is also expressed in terms of headline inflation. From the introduction video, remember that we care about inflation because it is an important indicator of conditions in the economy. The objective is to keep inflation low and stable. However, the RBA doesn't just monitor changes in headline inflation when trying to understand trends in the economy. An important reason for this is that in headline inflation includes the price changes of all items in the CPI basket. So it can be affected by large price changes due to temporary factors sometimes unrelated to changes of most prices in the economy. Typical examples of this are prices of food items or fuel, which can be quite volatile, that is, they move around a lot, because they are often affected by supply disruptions, such as bad weather, for example. On the other hand, there are other measures of inflation called underlying inflation, which exclude large price changes, both positive and negative. Let's have a look at some examples of large price changes which are included in headline inflation, but can be excluded in measures of underlying inflation. This chart shows annual headline inflation in Australia over the past 25 years or so. In 2011, tropical cyclone Yasi destroyed banana crops in Queensland. As a result of this significant reduction in supply, the price of bananas temporarily increased fivefold. You can see it in this other chart, which shows the price of a kilo of bananas in Australian capital cities, and how quickly it increased and then decreased during 2011. This increase was reflected in headline inflation. More recently, in the second quarter of 2020, a number of specific items contributed to the decline in headline inflation. For example, the government's free childcare policy, which meant the price of childcare for households was effectively close to zero for the quarter. As you can see, when price movements for individual items are very large, they can affect headline inflation a lot. But because these changes are temporary or one-off, they might not reflect how the prices of most other goods and services are changing in the economy, something economists call underlying inflationary pressures. For example, even though childcare became free temporarily during the second quarter of 2020, groceries did not. As a result, we may want to remove or look through these large price changes to get a sense of general inflationary pressures in the economy. To do this, the Reserve Bank closely monitors measures of underlying inflation. By removing larger price changes, these measures focus on how the prices of most goods and services are changing in the economy, the underlying inflationary pressures. However, there isn't one simple answer to this. There are many different measures of underlying inflation that we commonly consider to get a good picture of what is happening. Trim mean inflation, weighted median inflation, CPI excluding volatile items, one-off adjustments, and several others not listed here. We won't discuss all of these in this video. We will instead look at trim mean and CPI excluding volatile items in more detail. If you want more information on the other measures of underlying inflation, check out the explainer inflation and its measurement linked in the description. Now, to calculate trim mean inflation, we start by ordering all items in the Australian CPI basket by the quarterly price change, from the lowest to the highest growth rate. Each bar in this chart represents the price change of a category in the CPI basket from the previous quarter. For example, this bar 
could be the growth in the price of haircuts and related services over the quarter. Then we essentially create a new basket by removing the items with the largest positive or negative price changes from the right and from the left in the chart until we have grouped on both ends items representing 15% of household spending. When we trim these out, what we are left with is a basket of items corresponding to 70% of household spending. Trim mean inflation is then the weighted average of price changes for the middle 70% of items. This measure helps us focus on how the prices of most goods and services are changing in the economy while leaving out the largest movements. Because it is calculated every quarter, the items used for the calculation and the ones that are removed can change each time depending on which items had particularly large price changes. An alternative approach is to use a measure that always removes the same items. For example, the Australian Bureau of Statistics calculates a measure called CPI excluding volatile items, which is the average inflation rate of all items in the CPI basket, except for fruit, vegetables, and fuel. As already mentioned, prices of these items can move around a lot. Of course, this measure does not adjust for other large price changes which might affect other areas of the basket. For example, if you think about our discussion on recent trends in inflation, changes to the price of childcare would not be excluded from this measure. Let's see what these measures look like on a chart. This chart shows annual inflation in Australia for the last 25 years or so, based on three measures of underlying inflation. As we have seen in our examples, the measures are calculated differently, and you can see how their values have often been different over time. However, the main trends that they show have been quite consistent, and that's the important thing. If we put this chart side by side with the headline inflation chart we saw before, we can focus on a few examples to show the importance of looking at a broad range of alternative measures. If you recall, headline inflation increased here due to a large increase in the price of bananas because of Cyclone Yasi. However, this particularly large and temporary increase did not affect the underlying inflation measures, which between them were around half to one percentage point lower than headline inflation. When we look at the June quarter of 2020, we can see how, depending on the type of adjustment, the alternative measures provide different signals. For example, CPI excluding volatile items, the yellow line, behaves very similarly to headline CPI in the quarter. They both declined markedly, as the items it removes, uh, fruit, vegetables and fuel prices as we have seen, were not the item affected by the largest price change in the quarter, in this case, childcare. Instead, trim mean and weighted median inflation do remove the large temporary change in childcare prices and so they don't fall nearly as much. Overall, considering these measures together gives us a more complete picture. We'll leave it here for our discussion of alternative measures of inflation. Some useful links are in the description. See you next time.